It's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this. I'm Jeff Grubb. I write for gamesbeat.com. Let's talk about the game mess. This is the game mess show live with, with Jeff Grubb. Uh, I try to do this live every Tuesday. This week is different. I am pretty busy on Tuesday morning. Um, I was doing this show pretty early on Tuesday mornings and yet somehow this particular Tuesday, I've got like three different meetings happening. So I am pre-recording it. It's pretty late actually. Uh, I'm, I just got done playing some games, uh, kind of looked at my to-do list for tomorrow and realized it is, uh, it, it's a mess. So why not just do the game mess show right now? So uh, I have the list brought up over here. Uh, you can see it over here to the side. Not a lot has changed. Some actually some things have dropped off. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about it right now though. So the first thing I have on here is what is today. May the fourth be with you. I think who knows by the time that this is out, uh, you, you maybe some stuff has already started to happen. Uh, my, my, uh, what I've heard is, uh, and I've said this in a few places now, but let's say it here on the game mess live, uh, pre-recorded, uh, Lucasfilm and Lucasfilm games and Lucas arts, whatever they call themselves now, they are making a lot of deals for star Wars games. They are putting a lot of stuff in and in, into action. Uh, that means stuff with electronic arts, but I, I do believe that they're trying to make partnerships across the industry. Um, I, I, there has been rumors of, of companies like Microsoft trying to get a Star Wars game, uh, something, may, maybe the Mandalorian. I don't know if that's at Microsoft. Again, I don't know if that's at Microsoft. This is not me trying to uh, suggest that I do know. Uh, these are the things that I, I've heard. The thing I know for sure is that Lucasfilm has a lot of Star Wars games in the works. Um, the other thing I do know for sure about Lucasfilm is it takes its time. Uh, it, it, and by that, I mean, it's, it's a slow process to get everyone on board with these games to make sure everything works. Uh, but if things have started to pile up, May the 4th might be one of those days where they might want to start to announce things. Um, there's also rumors that Microsoft's going to put a lot of, of Star Wars games onto Game Pass today. Uh, we'll have to see what that looks like. I think that'd be pretty cool. I think that's such a good idea, honestly. Uh, Star Wars, I, I, I'm... May the 4th is such a stupid, silly, you know, made up holiday. Turns out all holidays are made up. This one especially so though. And, um, but somehow I always like, yeah, May the 4th comes around and it's silly and it's easy to be cynical about it and, and be, you know, kind of quippy and sarcastic about it. But also I tend to also want to like go watch Star Wars and play Star Wars stuff and, and like generally engage with Star Wars on May the 4th and, and the days following that. And so Microsoft kind of, if, if this is what's going to happen, stepping forward and saying, we have a bunch of Star Wars games on Game Pass, come and join us right now. Um, that's a smart idea to me. I think that's something people might want to take advantage of. Um, this should also be the week where we start to hear about Battlefield 6. Not really Battlefield 6. I, I put it as BF6 here, but Battlefield 2021, it, it won't be called Battlefield 6. Um, it, we should start to hear about that this week start to hear but this is like they've said they were going to talk about it soon and they put a trademark there and that was uh late last month for a while now i've been saying early may early may is is now we are now officially in early may uh so i think we should hear about battlefield here very soon um and then other changes the other thing i wanted to talk about is konami uh konami has dropped out konami konami uh konami has dropped out of e3 um they basically said that they had they, they don't have enough to show or what they were going to show is not ready. So they're backing out to me. That says they probably had maybe one or two games and now they're not feeling confident about having their showcase or their big game that they were really actually basing this all around. Isn't ready. So why, why try to force the little games in there? Maybe you could just like put that in someone else's showcase. Um, I really, really, really still hope that they just put an Igavania, you know, the game boy advance DS collection together for switch but man it seems like they might not even have that this year you know it's, it sounds like they had very little and now that game's not ready so they're taking their time and they're you know they said they'll still support the the esa sounds like they'll be back at e3 again in the future but not not this year okay um man i you know i feel like i'm like always like like i don't have enough to fill the show every week there's not enough to talk about uh, in terms of like new stuff with the list um, but man, we're already five minutes in. That's kind of like where I want to be after I do like the big three bullet points that I have at the beginning. 
Uh, but I did add some other stuff, some news happening this week that I kind of wanted to touch on a little bit here. Um, some people watch, the, watch this show and they don't listen to the podcast with me and Mike. Games Beat Decides on Friday. Um, but also this is a chance to kind of like check in midweek before that show and touch on some news. So Epic versus Apple is happening this week. And I mean, really happening. The court case has begun. I was listening to the call most of the day yesterday. It was pretty mind numbing stuff. A lot of questions directed to Tim Sweeney, who is the CEO of Epic asking him if he knew what a console was. Of course, Tim Sweeney knows what a console is. This is just a chance for his lawyers to enable Tim Sweeney to put onto the record exactly the just the, the most basic fundamental stuff uh so that uh, they can provide a, 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 a i don't know honestly I, i'm like trying to justify it but i guess they think the judge needs this stuff explained to her pretty um pretty plainly and at a very basic level and to me she seems pretty on top of things but whatever I, i'm not a lawyer and you're they're getting paid by the hour i guess i don't know um I will say, though, that there's been a lot of interesting snippets coming out of this stuff. Uh, the one that I've really kind of latched onto in my brain, mostly because it fits with the, you know, this is what happens. We find out a little bit of Timbits information, and what do you latch onto? The stuff that supports your narrative. And for me, my narrative with Epic has been, and you know, I, I'm trying to use n narrative in an almost pejorative sense, talking about the way I think about this stuff, trying to be fair. But... The way I think about the Epic Game Store is it seems like a big waste of money. It seems like they are trying to spend a lot of money to fight a fight that is going to be old fashioned here pretty soon. And by the time if Epic Game Store does get established as a true competitor to Steam, by the time that happens, the landscape will change so, so drastically that it will not have been worth the effort. Seems like it might not. It's already not worth the effort based on the information that we're getting from the documents submitted by Epic and Apple. And, uh, and other companies involved in the case somehow. Um, I, the, the, I, I don't have the documentation here, but basically the gist of it is, is very few cost, very few people who have signed up for the Epic Game Store are, are actually buying games. Um, most people showed up for the free games and only 7% of people who joined Epic Game Store to get a free game first, then went on to convert to make a purchase. And it seems like a pretty low number, right? Uh, that's not too surprising to me. People who go to these things for free games aren't looking to spend extra money, even, especially if that free game is like Fortnite or something, right? Um, but, you know, then th there are only 2 million people out of like 20 million or so, 2020, I think maybe it was 21 million, but only 2 million people showed up to buy one of those big exclusives that Epic, you know, signed up to be on the store. Um, that number seems especially low. I guess it's PC, so it's hard to gauge this stuff. It just didn't seem like it moved the needle very much. And um, yeah, boy, if I was in that, if I was in that business and this was my money, I would not be doing this, but it's not my money. They, they want to try, go to town, whatever. As long, I mean, as, if developers are getting money out of this, it's good. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on before I kind of, I'm going to go to questions and the questions will be from YouTube. I'll do a bunch this week, uh, you know, as much as I can, we'll take a look and see. I, I haven't actually looked at the questions too closely yet. The last thing I wanted to touch on though was PlayStation and Discord. This is a pretty cool deal, I think. This is a, um, a smart move by PlayStation. Jim Ryan put a blog post up on the uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment website yesterday. And the blog post basically said, we're making an investment, a minority stake investment in Discord as part of the Series H funding round for that company. And uh, we plan to integrate Discord into PlayStation Network in early 2022. So what does that mean? What does that look like? I mean, the way he described it said enabling people to communicate and, and gather in groups and stuff like that. And it just sounds like Discord is going to work with PlayStation Network. And to me, this like, okay, if you are going to completely replace like the kinds of groups and chat and stuff that you have in PSN with Discord instead, that's fantastic. Do that. Absolutely do that. But if that's not what it is, um, I still think this is going to be a cool thing if uh, I go to play a game on PC and it's cross-play with PlayStation, if I can just like create a room and Discord and PlayStation Network just treat it as the same thing and we can hang out in there and basically create a party and talk to each other uh, so that you don't have to have Discord running on your phone because you're playing on PlayStation, that is a huge thing as well. That's gonna be more and more necessary as we move forward as more people find themselves in situations where they wanna play games with their friends, but their friends have splintered off into different directions on different systems. and 
people just aren't going to want to use their phone to do Discord. And especially if you have, you know, your your PlayStation network that already has a, a, a chat group in that you might just end up not playing with those friends, right? Uh, it, it's tough. So hopefully this solves that problem. Uh, and, and then along the way, hopefully it enables a lot more cool stuff um, in terms of just hanging out with friends on, on console, uh, across cross platform, whatever. Um, I, I'll be interested to see how it, uh, how it actually functions in terms of like, you know, when, you know, cause Discord's also a huge like chat protocol, right? People use Discord for a lot of like text chat. And I wonder if you'll be able to engage with that stuff on, on PlayStation five. Uh, I'll be interested to see that. Uh, either way, I think it's a smart move. Uh, what does this mean for Microsoft and Xbox? I pro probably not much. Xbox already has some discord integration. Why, I, why they haven't done more up to this point is, is kind of baffling to me. My guess would be is they, they thought maybe they would be able to buy Discord and figure it out from there. That's not working out. Um, but nothing, nothing in this deal between PlayStation and Discord would prevent Microsoft from stepping in and, and, and still get making like a similar deal. Or even if Microsoft wanted to restart acquisition talks, this, this uh, investment from Sony wouldn't hurt that either because... Sony was just would just be an investor, a minority invest, investor, and they can either take the money or, or or try to like argue against it among the other investors. And if Microsoft's offering a fair price, uh, I imagine Discord would still take it. Okay, let's let's go to some questions. Let's do that. So I'm gonna hit the question button here. Hopefully, you guys can read that just fine. I'm gonna move this up here so I can kind of see what it looks like. Yeah, I think we can we can do this. So. I'm going to read through here. We'll see. We'll see some good questions. If not, we'll wrap this up pretty early. Uh, and then I'll try to be back next week with a live episode. Or maybe I'll do another live episode later this week, uh, especially because it seems like it's going to be a pretty intense week. It seems like a lot's going to happen. Uh, I wish that I had more information for y'all. I've shared what I can. Some stuff I'm, I'm holding close to the vest and other stuff I just don't know. So let's have some fun. And hopefully I'll be back later this week and we can talk about some of the stuff. And then, of course join us here on YouTube for the podcast uh, on Friday with me and Mike and hang out then. And we'll talk about all that stuff then. So who knows? By the end of this week, we could all be pretty worn out and exhausted. Um, okay, man, I'm looking pretty shiny and we're just going to have to deal with that. Um, let's start here with, uh, with some of the questions here. Sean Livingston asks, Hey, Jeff, is Banjo dead? Saw several people in the chat asking that question. Not sure if you noticed. I didn't notice, or if I did notice, it was just, it was, you know, there were so many questions it was hard to get to. Um, but I would say Banjo is not dead. It's just, it's not an active development, I don't believe. It, and it seems like, it just seems like, it, if this is gonna be a game that happens, um, it'll have to kind of come, it have to be like a specific concerted effort by Microsoft to make it happen. And it probably won't be an internal studio. It'll have to be a global publishing deal and finding the right studio to handle that is difficult right now. Um, a lot of studios are busy, and and the, when a studio kind of takes that deal, are they gonna make actually see this through and, and do a good enough job with Banjo and make it stand out, make it be special? Or is it just gonna come out and be like, you know, a three out of five? Is it gonna kind of be that and not worth everyone's time? Um, you know, not that three out of fives aren't worth anyone's time, but just like if it's, not just a Jeff Grubb three out of five, but everyone considers it a three out of five or, you know, seven out of 10 or lower. Um, then if that's the case, it's not worth the effort. And so the, 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 it's just hard right now to make a game like that work. Um, but really, we're going to have to kind of get through a lot of other games from a lot of these developers that are internal studios right now. I think um, one of the problems with Microsoft right now is that they, uh, it takes a long time to make games, yes, but a lot of the acquisitions that, that Microsoft made uh, were studios and developers that had projects that were already in the works and had pre, like, they had to get this stuff done first. And a lot of that stuff is carrying over, like Psychonauts 2, still in development. And that game's gonna come out, and it's gonna have to come out for multiple systems. It was, I believe it was, it was um, crowdfunded on Fez. I can't remember what the name of that site was, Fig. It's crowdfunded on Fig. And, uh, you know, like they have to get that game done. It's been years now that, they, that Microsoft has owned Double Fine, uh, but they haven't been able to like shift Double Fine to like, all right, now think about making a, a, a Game Pass game that it has a huge budget from the beginning. Uh, think about a huge scope for this game. What can you do with Microsoft money? Like they haven't had a chance to actually shift to that because they're still finishing earlier projects. And 
almost the entire lineup of developers that, that Microsoft acquired is in that same position. They were finishing games and it, and so they just had this laggard start and and really it's gonna be a couple years. We're gonna have to get through the stuff they've already announced before uh, they can start surprising us again, I think uh, beyond global publishing deals in terms of second party, bringing in uh, external studios to, for first party publishing deals. Um, okay, so MC3, I, I, I could have swore I answered this last week, but if I didn't, um, have you heard anything about what compulsion games are up to and how far along are they? Uh, they seem talented and with good artistic vision. Yeah, this is, I, for some reason, I feel like I answered this exact question last week, but let's just repeat it. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what they're up to, they are not very far along. That game's not going to be at E3 this year. It's going to take some time for us to see what they're up to. All right. All right. I had to fix my, my camera a little bit. This is better. This is, it's at least not bothering me. So if it's too dark now or whatever. I, I'm sorry, but it's not bothering me. And that's all I care about. Um, okay. Ricardo Sosa. Have you heard anything of a potential Mario Party 2 on Switch anytime soon? I haven't, and I think it's very unlikely. So um, we look back at the history of Mario Party games, you know, they were already at like Mario Party 10, right? Because there was multiple Mario Party games per system. And I don't think they're gonna do that anymore. It seems like this Super Mario Party continues to sell throughout the generation. As new people buy a Switch, they come and they buy, they buy Mario Kart, they get Super Mario Party, and then they get like Zelda or Mario or something like that. Or they get all four. Um, and you know, there's a few other games that are in that in that mix as well, but those are the big ones. And um, if that's you know, with, when when you have a game that continues to sell throughout the generation, and you're Nintendo, you just you point everyone to that. That's why you update Super Mario Party with online play instead of releasing a new one. They they're not. I really think it's unlikely they will make a new one anytime soon. It is going to be Super Mario Party supported through the end of this generation. Um, as we, as we get the, the Switch Pro, the Super Nintendo Switch or whatever, things might reset a little bit, uh, but probably not anytime soon. And they will probably save most of these games and their sequels for once they are selling us really actual new hardware, uh, the, the real next step up and not just the in incremental upgrade. All right. Um... Daniel Flores, did they listen to PlayStation gamers or did their legal department just get into a big mess when the representative for the devs losing, losing their games asked for compensation? Okay, so this is in reference to last week talking about Jim Ryan uh, responding and saying, we're not going to close down the PlayStation 3 or the Vita stores quite yet. Um, and, and basically what Daniel Flores here is suggesting is that uh, Sony did that because developers said, hey, we're, make, we're still making a game for this thing. Uh, you didn't give us any warning that you were going to shut down the digital stores and that's where we were planning to make most of our money why wouldn't you have told us so that we wouldn't have wasted our time making these games um and this is a fair point i just think that if anything playstation and their lawyers would and the lawyers for the company would have predicted that and would have said it would have been worth fighting that what's what's actually more expensive right now somehow is the PR battle with the fans, the public. You got to keep them on your side. You got to keep, if they, if people, if a narrative starts building in one direction, if it starts picking up momentum, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time and a lot of money. We saw this with Xbox last, last generation to reverse that. So it's a lot cheaper to just right away say, okay, no, wait, we're not going to do that. Let's, let's back up. Let us try again and, and just kind of take it from there. And that's, you end up saving a lot of time and money and just, and really just, uh, really, you could be saving your job uh, if you're like one of these executives because these things start to build up and they get out of hand and you can't capture it anymore. And the next thing you know, uh, every search for Jim Ryan, and this is, I think this is far-fetched still, but the next, it, like if it continued down that path and things got out of hand, the next thing you know, every search for Jim Ryan is Jim Ryan with devil horns, just like Bobby Kotick is or something like that. And Bobby Kotick can't put that stuff back in the, in the tube. That toothpaste is out. Uh, for the rest of his life, people are going to search Bobby Kotick. And what are they going to see? They're going to see Bobby Kotick with devil horns. Uh, every date he tries to go on, he's complained about this in, in, in real life, in interviews. He's complained that he the people, he can't get dates because girls, women will search him and then they'll see images of him all photoshopped to look like Satan. Um, and that's, yeah, 
you can't no all the money in the world can't undo that um so you got to stop it before it happens jim ryan i think is actually a pretty clever guy understood this and pulled back uh, pretty quickly not to say that uh, he won't make mistakes again not to say that generally he leans more towards kind of a just a a prag pragmatist and a guy who's just gonna make money for sony uh that's kind of what they want he's really good at that and that's kind of what he'll do first and then uh he'll worry about worry about the narrative second but it clearly he is still worried about the way the public feels about him i think i think that's kind of clear now um i actually when is Bofa dropping from Yui Abbey? What is, guess what is Bofa? I don't know. I, am I old? I'm 38. I'm sorry. I don't know what that is. Um, this could just be embarrassing for me. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not hip. I have two. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. I spend all day yelling at them to not hurt themselves. And then I try to write about video games a little bit. Um, and then I uh, tweet too much. And so I don't know what Bofa is. Let me know, Mui. Hey, Mui Abbey, you're, you're, uh, you're in the Discord. Tell me. Um, all right, from the fake president. Yeah, I'm keeping expectations low for E3 as everything has been pushed back. I see E3 next year being huge as delayed and new games will start rolling out again. Um, and, and then uh, there's a question about baseball, but I, I want to actually address this thing. I'm like at a point where I am still pretty excited for this E3 and I'm, I'm willing to kind of get my hopes up a little bit. I still think it is a bad idea overall to get your... Uh, you know, sky high hopes and to, and to expect, like if I was Microsoft, I would not promise the best E3 ever. I would just not, I would try to do everything I could to not do that. They do that all the time and they always end up dropping the ball in terms of actually delivering on that. Uh, and so they need to show, uh, just surprise us. If it really is the best E3 they've ever had, just surprise us. Um, I, I think even if they have the best E3 ever, it still might not match up to some historic great E3s from Nintendo or PlayStation. And you're still going to be judged against those. And uh, really, you just got to do something memorable. Feels like it's going to change the generation. I know that's like a really, really high bar to clear. Uh, but that is what we're, that's what, when people say, let's get hyped for E3, that is the level of delivery that they're expecting. Um, and when it works, it works. I mean, I think Sony was already clearly had a ton of momentum in the last generation with PlayStation 4. Uh, out of the gate, out of like at launch, being $100 cheaper, having the narrative in its corner, uh, all that stuff really made a difference. But then coming to like 2015, or I think, I think it was 2015, and having that E3 where they just just blew everyone, everyone away with Final Fantasy VII Remake and The Last Guardian and Shenmue or whatever. Like it didn't matter that the games actually, mo some of them like were either came and went uh, like The Last Guardian or were kind of, never really that all that much to begin with, like Shinmu. Uh, but the, then Final Fantasy VII Remake actually surprised everyone and actually did deliver, but you know, again, years later. Um, it didn't matter though, because the promises were so big. It was, and it was such a well-paced show and it was so intense. Uh, it might've been in one of the years where they started showing, I think the, the following year they started showing God of War and that was another really good year. Um, that stuff is, uh, it feels like it changes the generation. That is the bar that we are expecting. And I don't, I'm just not confident that Microsoft is going to ever do that. So uh, we'll see if they surprise us, surprise us. but I just, I, I don't have high hopes for that. Um, will, will it be a good show with a bunch of good games? That seems maybe likely, yeah. Uh, and then in terms of Nintendo, we know that they can, they can hit a home, they get a grand slam or they could bunt into an out and then just, you know, walk off in shame. That's Nintendo, they could go either way. Um, so who knows? And then Sony is going to show up probably after E3 a little bit and have something and probably have a pretty good uh, showcase of its own. Um, so, but yeah, I, I think I think it's going to be still a pretty good E3. I think these companies do have a lot of games kind of in the works, ready to talk about, ready to release here in the next six to 12 months. Uh, and they could talk about a lot of those right now we just might have to keep in mind that some of them could still get delayed. But for the most part, I mean, I think Nintendo's going to have a pretty good one too. I just think it's going to come down to whether or not they figured out their QA situation. We don't have to talk about that specifically, but yeah, I don't know. I have my hopes kind of at like an eight. All right, from Dieter's Game Room, 
Let's see here. Hey, Jeff, my name's Dieter. How are you? Uh, do you think we'll see Xbox Game Pass on the Switch? And if so, how much would it be? I don't think so. But if, if it were to end up on Switch, I think it would be a... I think it'd be five or ten dollars, and it would just be Microsoft games. Um, probably ten dollars, and you would just be Microsoft games, and then that would get you like the base Game Pass tier uh, from uh, on other services as, as well. Uh, I, I guess it, it's it, it's a challenge though, right? Because you can Microsoft can only s slice and dice Game Pass up in so many variations. Um, if it's just Microsoft games, it becomes a lot less valuable. But then, do you just sell it just five dollars? on Nintendo alone and you don't give people access to the streaming versions of games on PC, even though they're Game Pass members on Switch. It's like a hard thing to figure out, hard thing to parse. Um, but at the, end, at the end of the day, I think that getting Game Pass subscriptions onto Switch would be worth it to them. I just don't know how they thread that needle with Nintendo. That is, again, a very complicated conversation. A conversation I am sure has started in some form, whether or not uh, either the companies have made any progress towards a future where that seems even plausible. Uh, that that I'm very skeptical of that part of it. Uh, from Crypt, Game Pass could have saved Avengers, but they chose exclusive Spider-Man outfit for Sony and killed the game. The funny thing is, Spider-Man still hadn't uh, been released. Uh, st still hasn't been released. Um, I guess could it have saved? Avengers, I don't know. I, that's a tough one. Maybe I, I, it could have made a difference. Maybe also in terms of like just shoot, like oh they chose uh, Sony and like exclusives um, over Game Pass. Uh, to me, that just seems like like Microsoft wasn't offering enough money, and really maybe things would change now that the companies see how well Game Pass handles these sorts of games. Um, but it's not like yeah, like uh, Outriders did really well but it's not like it's stuck around and i know they said it wasn't a live service game but still it hasn't stuck around it sort of came and went as well it, it, it did better than i think anyone was anticipating but it still it came and it went all right we are nearing 30 minutes so uh let's see if we can get a few more questions and maybe just one or two more it's also getting late for me and i want to get to bed so um <clears throat> From Chrono, any chance for Xbox version of Final Fantasy XIV soonish now that uh, Xbox Live Gold requirement is lifted? I, w I think maybe. I don't know for sure. Um, I think possibly, though. From Mr. V, hey, Jeff, do you think Sony will announce what they're up to soon or we'll just have to wait until late May, early June? It's been a long time since they had a big show. So, you know... What are they worried about right now? They just launched Returnal. They 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 are planning to launch uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart June 11th, right before E3. They're busy. They're busy promoting games. So um, when they have a state of play, the state of play is focused on Ratchet of Ratchet and Clank, and uh, that's kind of all they're gonna spend their time on right now. Um, once we get through Ratchet and Clank, uh, once we get through E3, Sony will come back and say, "Hey." Don't forget Returnal. Don't forget. Don't forget Ratchet and Clank. Don't forget. You know, uh, the Demon Souls and Spider Man and PlayStation Five. And here's our plans to try to get more PlayStation Fives out there. Uh, but also, here's the rest of our year. And here is Horizon Forbidden West. And uh, maybe like in the next twelve months, Final Fantasy Sixteen, something along those lines. Um, here's God of War, Ragnarok, like, is is that going to make, you know, in the next 12 months, you know, from this summer, uh, they'll talk, start talking about that stuff, and then they'll have other things to surprise people, because I think they have some, like, third-party deals that, are, that will surprise people, they probably have some uh, first-party publishing deals with external studios that are kind of still in the works, um, and I, yeah, I, I think we'll hear about it probably by the end of June uh, from, from Sony, so, especially once we get on the other side of Ratchet and Clank, um, but for now, expect them to focus primarily on these games. That they are still in the middle of launching. That is their priority. Okay. Um, let's do this last one. Uh, I think so. Well, let me just read it first and see if it's going to be the last one. Facundo B. Do you think this gen Square Enix will give us another Deus Ex game? I don't think so. Maybe. 
I've, I haven't like asked around about that one too much and I haven't looked into it, but just like kind of going for my gut, I'm not sure what appetite Square Enix has for like these Western games right now. I feel like they want to like just kind of keep churning through them and try to find the one that's going to work. And when they just don't sell 15 million copies, they will, will be upset and move on to the next one. But um, I don't know, especially after Cyberpunk, right? Maybe they're going to look at Cyberpunk and be like, oh man, uh, people don't want that genre. And I know that's incorrect. I know that's not actually the, the lesson to take away from that. Uh, but, you know, these are big corporations who are afraid of risk and any association with like, oh, Deus Ex is Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is cyberpunk. Uh, we don't want to be associated with that, so let's just um, pull the plug on any Deus Ex projects. Uh, but this is that's me just speculating. I don't know for sure. Uh, I guess I could see it happen, but I, I'm 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 thinking it's unlikely. Um. Oh, you know what? Here's a good one from uh, a period dot. Let's see that right there. A dot. Here's a good one to end on. Okay. We don't need another Gears. I think they need to work on a new IP. So I can't remember if I mentioned this last week, but probably not. I feel like I kind of learned this in the last week or so. Uh, Gears Studio, the coalition, is busy. They are working on Halo. They're helping with Halo Infinite. That is one of the big projects that Coalition is contributing to in a major way. Coalition is also, of course, making the next Gears game. That's just, of course, they're going to do that. Uh, but the Coalition is also working on a third thing, uh, and it likely is a new IP. Now, I've heard rumors that it could be a Star Wars thing from out of the Coalition, but I just I haven't been able to confirm that. And these are these are rumors that are kicked around in a few different places, and so it's hard to it's hard to track down. But basically, I wouldn't. I'm not putting any money on that. I would love to see that. I think that'd be a great surprise, but I just, I don't know for sure. But uh, they, uh, the Coalition is working on a third thing. And so we'll see what that turns into. It's probably still quite a ways off. Uh, whether or not that comes out before the next Gears, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just in a prototype phase, but they are, they are considering something new. So, and I would love to see that. It's a talented studio and I just happen to not jive with Gears very well. I just, I'm not, it's not my thing. Um, so I'd love to see what, what else they could do. Excuse me. And then, uh, you know, if it is a Star Wars, even better, because I love Star Wars. Okay. So I'm slapping my thighs. That means it's time to get out of here. Time to wrap up. Uh, I think this went okay. I'm going to miss you, chat. I, I, miss, I miss you guys hanging out, asking me questions live. It's always a good energy. But uh, just keep in mind, I am busy. <laughs> I'm busy on Tuesday morning. I, I got a lot going on. So... Uh, hopefully this posted live or posted onto YouTube and everyone got to watch it there uh, and, and you're doing okay. Uh, maybe I'll do this as like a premiere or something. We can, I could try to watch along with you while I'm in my other meetings or something. Okay. Uh, that's going to do it though. Let's wrap it up. Um, if here, you know, I should do, I should do some stuff like, like where you could find me and uh, what, what else you should watch. So I'm Jeff Grubb on Twitter. Don't follow me. I tweet too much. Um, uh, my YouTube here is, is a good thing to follow if you want to kind of keep up with some stuff that's happening in video games, my thoughts, my podcast with Mike on Fridays, we do that live. Uh, but also, if you want to just hang out, I have the Discord. My Discord is in my bio on Twitter. It should also be in the description here on YouTube. Uh, it's free to join. Join us, come hang out. Uh, and then if you want to support me in the video stuff that I do, uh, the best way to do that is there's a Patreon link inside the Discord. And it's patreon.com slash Jeff Grubb, but just kind of follow it from the Discord. It gets you special access to like special rooms inside the Discord, uh, the, the podcast producer's room, and then also the uh, industry secrets room, which is kind of, we just, it's not, I'm not going to tell you everything that's happening, but it's where we kind of discuss stuff like, oh, here's some rumors, here's some stuff that I'm, maybe I am hearing that I'm not quite sure about, uh, but we can have conversations about those. Uh, regardless, the whole Discord's a cool place to hang out at. People are always going to town, always talking about stuff. Uh, talking about latest movies and video games and, and TV and all that stuff. Uh, it's It's been really great. Um, yeah, I think that's going to do it, though. I should get out of here. Thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, until next time, take care of yourself. Have a good one. And goodbye. <laughs>